It is Monday, July 8th, 2024, and we have a loaded show coming your way on today's Philadelphia 76ers now, and here's everything that we're talking about. The Sixers are still trying to trade for Dorian Finney-Smith. It is still possible. There are loopholes. The financials of this are crazy, but like the classic Dumb and Dumber scene, you're telling me there's a chance? We're going to explain why Philadelphia has a chance of landing Dorian Finney-Smith. So how the Sixers can make it happen, that and much more. And then also, the Sixers, as we talked about over the weekend, signed Caleb Martin, taking him away from the Miami Heat. And Caleb Martin turned down how much money from the Heat reportedly to sign with Philadelphia? We're also going to discuss that. First, we're on the countdown to 20,000 subscribers. We are currently sitting at 18,095 subs. Really appreciate everybody's support here on 76ers Now. The last couple of weeks have been the best stretch in this channel's history. We've had videos go and pop off for 20,000 views, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. It would not be possible without all of you. There are so many great content creators out there. I'm not taking away from what they do. I'm just really proud of what Chip and I have been able to bring everybody here on 76ers now, and we're glad that you're responding well to it. That milestone, it'll look pretty damn good. 20,000 subscribers, so hit that sub button right now. Let's get their ASAP. To the man of the hour and the man over the last couple of days, really since the Sixers made those initial splash moves in free agency, Dorian Finney-Smith. He's looked at as the perfect four-man for this Sixers lineup alongside Joel Embiid with Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, and then the other elements of that starting five, we're not sure what it's going to be because we don't know what the Sixers are going to do at that power forward spot. So is a DFS trade still possible for the Sixers? Yes, but also no. According to Hoopsite, the Sixers have exploratory interest in trading for the Nets forward, who can hit the three, he can defend multiple positions, would be a really good addition and fit on this team, a tough a gritty player with a fascinating upbringing and background, which lends himself to being a very mentally tough, get it out of the mud type of player. As for the cap difficulties here, there are a lot of them in order for the Sixers to pull this move off. Sixers current payroll, 161 million. The salary cap, 140 and a half. So to trade for Dorian Finney Smith, the Sixers need to match his $14.9 million salary. And believe it or not, this is where the seldom used K.J. Martin could come into play. The Sixers could use K.J. Martin as a sign-and-trade piece and give him up to, hold on to your seats, $35 million. However, because of NBA rules, his outgoing salary only counts as 50% in a sign and trade. The new CBA, I don't like it. I think it handicaps organizations. I don't think we're going to see a lot of teams go on these long dynastic runs like the Golden State Warriors because it's going to be really difficult to pay everybody. And then the nuances of it, I just want to be a basketball fan. I want to talk ball. I don't want to have to be a lawyer and a financial accountant. But with these new rules, you kind of have to understand the salary cap a little bit, which is what we're trying to simplify for you. So what this means is to sign and trade K.J. Martin for Dorian Finney-Smith, K.J. Martin would have to sign for $30 plus million. Now, it's not as bad as it sounds. Only the first year of the contract needs to be guaranteed. But the Brooklyn Nets would have to be okay with absorbing that deal. Brooklyn can technically afford it, but it would severely limit their flexibility this year. Do they care about this year? They're kind of rebuilding right now. What's more likely is that you sign KJ to a two-year, $20-plus million contract, and then you trade him for Dorian Finney-Smith at the NBA trade deadline, which would not happen until February. So a good job by producer Chip for breaking that down. Any more on this and just... Overall thoughts on the craziness that it would take to bring in Dorian Finney-Smith to this team. Yeah, if it were to happen right now, that would surprise me. What I want people to take away from, from all this right now, the Sixers clearly have interest in the player. So I do expect them, as we get close to that deadline, to go after Dorian Finney-Smith. But right now, I don't want people to be surprised 
if KJ Martin does get a deal that comes out to be around somewhere from eight to 10 to maybe even $12 million a season, it'll probably be again, a two year deal with a team option on the second year. I just don't want people to be like, why are we paying KJ Martin all this money again? It's probably just to trade him in the future. Again, that trade right now does not seem very likely at all. Why would the Nets want to limit themselves the rest of this year and take on a $30 million salary of KJ Martin? They'd probably be asking for even more picks than what Dorian Anthony Smith is probably worth, which I'd imagine, you know, at the deadline, maybe it's KJ Martin, a first and a second or two. They might be asking for two firsts just to take on KJ Martin at 30 million. So it's going to be tough, but again, Sixers clearly have interest in the player. They're probably just going to sign Vetman guys the rest of this free agency period. Maybe give KJ Martin that contract. But if that does happen, don't be surprised and keep your eyes on DFS again as we get further along into the season. Daryl Morey has done a great job so far. He pulls this move off. Sixers have already won the offseason, I think, among all teams in the NBA. They had to make the Paul George move. It's the move that made the most sense. It was the biggest splash. It was the best fit. They had all this cap space. They saved all of this money to bring in Paul George. Andre Drummond back up center. Kelly Oubre back. You fill out your bench a little bit with Eric Gordon, Jared McCain. See what we get from Adam Boney. You pull off Caleb Martin. Daryl Moore has been crushing it. You make the trade for Dorian Finney-Smith. Oh, my goodness, Daryl. Do it to me. Coming up next, speaking of Caleb Martin, he turned down what from the Miami Heat to join the Philadelphia 76ers? The Sixers winning this battle against Miami? Things you love to see. File it under that, but first... Make sure you subscribe to the channel, as I said, for number one, for your number one destination for Sixers coverage all year long. Myself, Chip, been bringing the heat. We went live five days in a row last week. I think it was a blast. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in. Hit that sub button right now. As for Kayla Martin, according to reports, he turned out a bag from Miami to sign with Philadelphia for less money and less years. Kayla Martin reportedly turning down a five-year $65 million contract with the Miami Heat. Barry Jackson, Florida Sports Buzz with this. So Martin turned down five years, 65 from the Heat. Then a week later, settled for what ESPN said is four years topping 32 from the 76ers. Martin's rep thought the Heat offer wasn't good enough, which dumbfounded the Heat. This Heat-Martin negotiation last weekend was quite, shall we say, intense per two sources, Martin's camp thought the Heat were trying to force him to take what Martin's rep thought was below market deal, and he made that clear. The Heat thought this was very good as far as their offer it was, and they made that very clear. Either way, it's a huge win for Daryl Morey over the Miami Heat. You poach away an important player from Miami, and you improve your team at a position of need. As it stands right now, I would imagine the starting five for Philadelphia is currently constituted. Tyrese Maxi, Kelly Oubre, Paul George, Caleb Martin, Joel Embiid. I've seen a lot of people saying, the Sixers are so small, the Sixers are so small. They start Derek White and Drew Holiday. They're both 6'4". And so the Sixers aren't that outsized by a team like that or the New York Knicks. Although, if you start Tyrese Maxey and Jared McCain, two 6'2 guards in the backcourt, then it's a little bit undersized. But the seven-foot wingspan for Caleb Martin, him being 6'5". We know about the size of Paul George, Joel Embiid. Kelly Oubre, Sixers are in a pretty decent spot with their overall size in that starting five if they move forward with that starting five. Adam Aronson, with this report, can confirm as first reported by CBS, Sixers in the process of planning to bring back the black throwback jersey seen in last night's Tyrese Maxey tribute video, but they will not be in the mix for the 2024-2025 season. That's a bummer. I would love to see those classic Sixers, black jerseys come back. The white ones are really cool as well. When I was growing up with Allen Iverson, when he won MVP and the Sixers made it to the NBA Finals, they were rocking those after they shifted away from kind of an iteration of what we see now, kind of the red and blue trademark Sixers colors. Why not just run it up? Why not just include those as the alternates this year? I don't think it's that hard to do, but it looks as though we're going to have to wait another year. And by the way, the Tyrese Maxey Museum, the tribute for him, one of the coolest things I've ever seen an organization do for one of their own players. The Sixers in my lifetime have messed up a lot of things. They knocked it out of the park with that. 
and Tyrese Maxey deserved it. If you haven't seen that video, I put it on my page, at Chase underscore Senior on X, and the Sixers tweeted it out as well. If you enjoyed today's show, Real One Roll Call, if you want us to go live this week, type me down in the comments section. Maybe we can accommodate that. I'd love to do it, frankly. Thank you.